In this lesson, we will learn how to manage the data drift. This video walks you through exactly what you need to do so you can deal with data drift and even harness its power that will help your pipeline to adapt to changes quickly. First things first, what is data drift? The animation below shows what happens during the data drift. Each square represents data as it is flowing in the pipeline. When data drift happens, the data becomes unpredictable. It may change its structure, semantics, or infrastructure. Data drift interrupts processes and alters data, but can also show new opportunities for data use. So what can we do to identify it? You probably remember from the previous lesson on setting up alerts and subscriptions that we can create our own rules and manage the data drift. Well, you can establish your own rules to indicate when the structure of data changes on any link in the pipeline. There is also an option to enable metrics and create alerts for such rules. Make use of the expression language that provides the functions for creating data drift rules. This table describes the type of data drift rules that you can generate on the different field types and you can use specific field types with each function. For example, you have an alert that is triggered when the number of fields in the record changes. When processing the records with this number of columns, an alert is triggered for both the third and fourth records. Let's see for ourselves how the data drift rule concept works in stream sets. In this demo, we will create two separate pipelines. One of them will be reading data from a JDBC table and writing it to the Kafka destination. The other pipeline will be reading data from the same Kafka destination and sending it to trash. Follow the same process as before to pre-configure your pipeline. Go to the StreamSets cloud, proceed to the Build a Pipeline section, and start creating your pipeline from scratch. Complete the necessary fields. Keep the defaults. Once you find yourself on an empty canvas, select an origin JDBC query consumer. Before you continue creating your pipeline, make sure that you have selected the JDBC stage library within the deployment and installed the necessary driver. Check the lab for further details. Give your origin a meaningful name and a description. Our origin will be sourced from the demos database. Next, proceed to the JDBC tab. We'll have to specify our SQL query from the MySQL database. Go to the connection string. Specify the demos database, as the origin will be using the demos database. Define the SQL query. Let's use a Twitter profile table and set the offset column as priority. Don't forget to define your credentials in the section with the same name. Complete your details as follows. Now let's move to the next stage. Select a field renamer processor. Name it. And proceed to the rename section. Change the field name, total followers to the number of followers. Finally, select the destination. The data coming from the MySQL database table is to be written into the Kafka producer. So let's specify its configuration settings. Give it a proper name and a description. Then go to the Kafka section and define the broker URI. This is Kafka's connection string. Next, determine Twitter data as the topic. It will serve as a table the data will be written into. Lastly, specify the data format. Select delimited as the data format. 
and select with header line in the relevant field. Keep the default CSV in the delimiter format field. Validate it. And start the first pipeline. You can see that we have four records coming from the Twitter profile table. Now it's time to move over to our second pipeline. Repeat the same process as before. Keep the defaults. Create a simple pipeline. Select Kafka Multitopic Consumer as the origin. Pick Trash as the destination. All in all, our pipeline will be reading from the Kafka topic and sending the data to Trash. Configure your Kafka Multitopic Consumer the following way. Give it a name and a description. Specify the broker URI. It should coincide with the one from the previous pipeline. Leave the consumer group as default. Define the topic list as follows. Note that we will use the same topic as for the first pipeline. Likewise, determine the data format as delimited. Select with header line. Keep the delimiter format type as default. Thus, the second pipeline is to read the data from the Kafka destination. Validate the pipeline. Finally, start running the pipeline. Suppose an engineer has changed our pipeline, for example, removed or added a column. How can stream sets inform us about it? When you face such a scenario, a good practice would be to make use of the data drift rules. So let's create a data drift rule to be notified of data structure changes. While being on the second pipeline canvas, stop the pipeline and click the arrow between the two stages. Proceed to the data drift rules menu at the bottom left of the screen. Once you access the menu, click Create a new rule. Specify the following in the pop-up window. Give a label name. Set the following condition. This function will be looking for any change in the number of fields. Set the sampling percentage carefully. The platform will look at data as a percentage. And when we set 100, we are asking the platform to check all the data. You may also enable the meter. Lastly, set the alert text as follows. It will provide us with information about the changes in the user interface. Save your changes. Once you close the rule window, be sure to enable the rule. Next, proceed to the Stream Sets Academy environment where our data collector is running. Enter MySQL. Specify the database you are using. Introduce the following changes. We are going to add one more column, user ID. Go back to the cloud. Move over to the second pipeline. Now the platform should start reading from a different consumer group. So let's change the consumer group name. Once you do the change, reset origin and start your pipeline. Notice the red bell that has appeared below. See the details about the changes. In our example, we already modified the table before, so it shows us all the changes that were made so far now let's see another example of the data drift rule. It is related to the column name modification. To apply it, do the following steps. Go back to your Academy Lab environment. As you can see, our table has five columns now. Let's change the name of the last column. Execute the following command. Now go back to the second pipeline canvas. 
stop your pipeline. Proceed to the Data Drift Rules menu and create a new one. Label it as Field Name Change. Input the following condition. Specify the sampling percentage. Next, write the alert text. There is a field name change in the related source. In this scenario, we are going to use a static text. Save the changes and close the window. Enable the new rule and disable the previous one. Now the platform should start reading from a different consumer group. Don't forget to change the consumer group name. Reset the origin and start your pipeline. Observe the alert. Now you can see the result. In just a few steps, you can set the data drift rules and be notified of the changes happening to your pipelines. Follow the pertinent lab instructions and set the data drift rules for yourself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.